Rate air in ten. Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting from the FLHS studios, the ATA and International Thespian Society Troop 3103 presents Dracula, a radio play written by Philip Grecian, based on his own stage play and on the novel by Bram Stoker. And now, turn out your lights and move in close to the glow of your radio dial as FLHS presents Dracula. Frightening, is it not? The raw power of the thunderstorm. Primitive man feared it, but you and I, we have explained it with our modern science. Still, there are many things we cannot explain, and these are always with us. They are with you now. Even now, you feel them, stealing up behind you. You feel them as they stroke the back of your neck, never quite touching. There, you feel it. You dare not look, for if you do, they will know. But you feel it. You feel their fingers of smoke as they brush so close. They taunt you, dare you to look into their hellish eyes, only inches from your own. A hair rises on the back of your neck. A chill passes through your body. You feel them, but you do not see, for the beacon of science creates deep shadows, and they hide in these shadows, and they laugh that you do not believe, and they wait. Always they wait until you are alone, all alone in the dark. There, listen. They whisper your name. Did you hear? They know your name. But of course, I forget. You do not believe. It is only imagination, huh? Perhaps, or perhaps it is the vampire. I am Dr. Van Helsing, and I have long followed the trail of the vampire. It lives on for centuries, draining the blood, the life from its victims, causing them to become vampires. And this is our story, the story of a small band of mortals who face the most powerful vampire of them all. He has been known by many names, Strigoi, or Dog, Pakal, Vrolok, Nosferatu, Wampir, and Dracula. It began in the year 1888 in Whitby, England, where Dr. Jack Seward had established a small sanitary. Come in. Excuse me, Dr. Seward, sir. I was wondering if you were done with your dinner tray? Yes, of course, Bertie. Over there on the desk. Yes, sir. You're most out of wine, sir. I'll bring another bottle. Thank you. Why? You ain't such a thing. I'm not very hungry this evening. Ain't Miss Lucy any better, sir? No. No, I'm afraid not. If there's anything... Thank you, Bertie. I'll take your dinner tray, then. Thank you. Good night, then, sir. Good night. Just awful. Poor Dr. Seward, he just... Boo! Ah! Williams, now look what you've done. You're paying for these dishes. Was you dropped them, love? Was you made me. Now help me clean up here. All right, all right. I'm surprised the doctor ain't out here. Made enough noise to wake the dead. Take a lot more than a few broken dishes to bring him to. He's been sitting in there all day, not moving. Just staring off into space, thinking. There, that's got it all up. I'll have to sweep for wee bits. You seen anything of Renfield? The one that eats spiders? <sighs> Most like a spider himself. Skinny, scurrying little beggar. Gotta find him before somebody misses him. Keep your eyes open. It's your job to watch, not mine. But I'll keep my eyes open all the same. Now who could that be at this hour? Coming, I said I'm coming. Yes? Is this a sanitarium? Dr. Seward's sanitarium. It is. Is Dr. Seward in? Well, of course he's in on a night like this. Where else would he be? 
Come back tomorrow at a decent hour. He's expecting us. Storm's coming up. Better come in then. Thank you. We're the Harkers, John and Nina. Oh, Miss Lucy talks about you a lot. How is Lucy? Not so good, Mom. Wasting away. Where's Jack? Upstairs in his office. May we see him? Yes, Mom, this way. Come in. Dr. Seward, sir, there's people here to- Jonathan, Mina, come in. We came the moment we received your wire. Mina, you never look lovelier. John, there's wine over there. Would you care for some? Of course, Mina. Please. I see you've done some work on the old place. I have. How long since you moved in here? Two years? Two years this month. You're a bit low on wine. There's more coming. Good. It's perfect, isn't it? The wine? Um, hardly. You know what I mean. This building. I owe that to John. His law firm found it and saw it to the purchase. It's ever so much better than the old building. Come back and work for me, Mina. You were the best nurse I ever had. She's retired. No, darling. I married and went into private practice looking after you. <laughs> Lucy once told me that when you were little girls, you were always nursing injured birds back to health. She still does. Jack, you see any better? <sighs> Worse every day. That's why I brought her to the sanitarium. Here, I had the staff and equipment to monitor her health. But the wedding? Postponed. Her illness. Have you diagnosed it? No. I have no idea what it is. She gets weaker every day. Periodically slips into some sort of trance-like state. She's taking a sleepwalking and... That could be dangerous with the cliffs. Y yes, the, the cliffs, the, the harbor. Isn't there anything? There's got to be. I've cabled Van Helsing. Abraham Van Helsing from Amsterdam. In middle school school, you... Studied under him, yes. The London papers have been quoting from his books on ritual murder. Oh? Yes. What with the Ripper murders in Whitechapel? Oh, of course. Van Helsing's coming here then? Mm, yes, I expect him in any time. He sent this ahead. A necklace? A crucifix. It's exquisite. Slavic? Transylvanian, I think. Let me see. More wine, sir? Thank you, Bertie. Put it over there. Yes, sir. Mm, yes, this is probably Transylvanian, Jack. I saw some like it when I was there. He wanted Lucy to wear this? At all times, according to his note, says she shouldn't be without it. Why? Can't imagine. Well, she's not wearing it now. She won't touch it. May I see her? Bertie, is Miss Lucy awake? Yes, sir. Would you, would you take Miss Harker to her, please? Yes, sir. This way, Mom. Thank you. You've lost some weight, John. Yes. Mina told you, didn't she? She might have mentioned. I asked her not to trouble you. I, well, as you know, a few months ago, I journeyed to Transylvania. A client of ours, a nobleman, wanted to purchase property here in Whitby. Go on. I remember a coach ride through the Borgo Pass and arriving at her client's castle and then nothing. Three weeks just gone. Gone? I awoke in a Budapest hospital bed. I'd been found on a train, delirious, raving, burning with fever. What could have happened that? No idea. But lately I've had these dreams and I... Jack, did you know your sanitarium was part of an old monastery? Yes, of course. The old abbey across the way too, but what does this have to do with... Carfix Abbey. Yes. Can we see it from this balcony? 
Oh, quite a drop. Sense of vertigo, eh? Definitely. That balcony faces out over the sea, or on a cliff, remember? The abbey's in the other direction. Yes, well, you see, we never imagined for a moment that the abbey would sell. That's why we divided the property. What does this have to do with... The nobleman I spoke of purchased the abbey. Well, the land is worth something, certainly. He plans to build? He plans to live in it. In the abbey? In the abbey. Just as it stands, lives in it now. Has for several weeks. It's nothing but a ruin. All dust and cobwebs and broken walls. I've never seen anyone over there. Oh, he's there. Who is this fellow? His name is Count Dracula. Didn't latch tightly. My fault. I'll get it. That sounds like a, almost like a wolf. Some of the townspeople swear that they've seen wolves in Larpool Wood. But there haven't been wolves since. No, of course not. Just a large dog. Or several. There, it's latched this time. Sorry. No damage. Quite a storm brewing. Unusual number of storms recently. With storms and dogs howling all night, how do you sleep? Fitfully. Who is it? Come in. Renfield. Ah, good evening, Dr. Seward. I'm afraid I can't stay long. Yes, I can imagine Mr. Williams is looking for you. Jack, um, should I? Quite all right, John. Staff has been alerted. I I've been trying to get to you to, to tell you something, something important. But I don't quite remember. Perhaps, perhaps it is to warn you. Yes, that must be it. To warn you about the fellow in the next room over from mine. He's mad, you know. Oh? Oh, yes. Quite mad, quite mad. Possessed by demons. Demons? It's the season for them. Excuse me, Governor. Did you ring the... Oh, there you are. Please show Renfield to his room. Yes, sir. With pleasure, sir. Oh, no. No, not, not, not now. Not yet. He, he wants to take away my spiders. My, my little, nice little spiders. Spiders? <sighs> yes, sir. Uh, you see, sir, well... You said I should get rid of the flies, not to eat the flies, so I had to catch the spiders. Don't you see? It wouldn't be right to let the flies go. It wouldn't be right. So I I'm feeding them to, to the spiders. All the flies will be gone soon. All gone. Fly. Flies. Fly into spiders. All gone. Soon. Very soon. Very soon. The spiders... Nice spiders. Flat... Fat black spiders. I collect them. I feed them. Well, I don't. And then I eat them. Oh, but spiders are very good. Very good. They are the life, strong life, and they give it to me. Williams, take Renfield back to his room and remove the spiders. No, no. I I'll stop. I, I won't eat the spiders. No more spiders. No more. They're good. Very good, but small game. Too small. I beg you, let me keep them a bit longer, just a bit, and then I'll, I'll dispose of them. That's a promise? A promise? Yes, yes, a promise. But I won't free them. I've caught a sparrow. Only this afternoon, a little sparrow. It flew into my windowsill for breadcrumbs, and I reached out, slowly. And I had it, but I didn't squeeze, oh no. Very gently, very gently. A new pet... I shall tame it and, and feed it on spiders. It shall be my sparrow, my fat little sparrow. Soon I shall have more sparrows, all singing and growing fat. Perhaps, perhaps I shall. Might I ask a favor? A favor? Oh, a great favor, a favor of the great Dr. Seward. And that is? A kitten, a little kitten that I could play with and teach and feed and feed and feed. Well, dare go to sparrows. I'm sorry, Renfield. Oh, no. Oh, please. I must have a kitten. My salvation depends on it. A kitten. A pretty little kitten. To feed. 
Get him a tiger and make us all happy. Show Renfield back to his room, please. Yes, sir. My kitten? Shall I have my kitten? My, my kitten, my little... I'm sorry. No. Ah! Jack, look out. He's got a knife. Ah! Ah! You got him, Doctor. He's out like a light. Good job, if I might say so, sir. Just one punch, and he's... Just... Take him back to his room, Williams. <clears throat> yes, sir. Right away, sir. Uh... Oh, come on. Let's get up now. You'll pay, Seward. You'll all pay! Back to your room now. We'll see if we can find you something that don't move while you're trying to eat it. The master's at hand. The time is coming. Make his path straight. He is the mightiest of the mighty. He will baptize you with fire. The master is at hand. The time is coming. <laughs> Jack, are you all right? That knife, he... Caught me on the wrist. You're bleeding here. Let me... No, it's fine, John. I'll wrap my handkerchief around it. It's nothing. And this knife... A letter opener. Yes, from my own desk. I shouldn't leave such things lying about, but patients shouldn't have access to this floor. In theory, anyway. I believe he tried to bite you. Yes. Are all your patients like that? No. Renfield's an interesting case. Just lately, he's been collecting lives. Lives? For a time, he collected flies, then spiders, now it's birds. Each creature a step higher on the scale, a larger soul, worth more to him. You can imagine this fate he had in store for the kitten. What a horrible thought. I wonder what value he put on a man's soul. Jack, Lucy's not in her room, and the front door is standing open. Quickly, John, outside, before she reaches the cliffs. searching for Lucy Weston. The wind-driven rain cut into their faces, sought out their eyes. They screamed Lucy's name into the raging void, and the words came rushing back with a force that lent them substance and brought pain. They were so lost in the staging darkness, and then the world was restored in lightning, and there she was, standing high on the cliff, leaning out over the abyss. Hundreds of feet below, the churning waters of the sea beckoned, and beside her stood a dark boat, darker ever than the night itself. Its arms, if they were arms, upraised. I turned and saw them, just as the lightning died. For a moment, all was black, and when another boat restored their sight, the thing was gone. The men scrambled upward just as Lucy pitched forward into the arms of Jack Seward. Now they moved back toward the beacon at the open door where Nina stood waiting. <sighs> Take her into the sitting room. There's a fire going. Over here, on the daybed. How is she? She'll be fine. She was sleepwalking again. You know, Jack, I swear I saw. Jack? I'm here, Lucy. Oh, Jack. I. I was dreaming, I think. I remember, I remember hearing wolves howling, something tall and dark with me. I remember red eyes. I seemed to leave my body. I went high into the air. It was like a, like a dream, but, but not a dream. I saw John and Mina and, and- We're, we're here, Lucy. Mina, you're here after all. Then- Lucy. Yeah. Those marks on your throat, what? Oh, oh, it's nothing. I was fastening my scarf and caught myself with a pin. Isn't that silly? It looks almost like- John, Mina, I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry that you had oh, no. to. Nothing I like more than a wrist bone in the rain. <laughs> oh, John, you're always so- I seen him, I seen him standing outside the ripper. I seen the ripper. The what? That's enough, Bertie. Bring those blankets over here. Yes, sir. But I seen him. I did. 
Here, Lucy, these will help to keep you warm. Thank you, Jack. I'm so cold. You may go now, Bertie. Thank you. Aren't we going to do something about the... The Ripper. Yes, I suggest that you keep your bedroom door locked. You don't have to believe me, sir, but I brought your newspaper down. Here, you should read what they're saying. It's the Ripper, sure as... I've read it. Thank you, Bertie. All right, then. But I'm sleeping with the Bible under my pillow tonight. Good night, all. Good night, Bertie. Good night. The Ripper? Bertie's been reading about the murders in Whitechapel, and she's been imagining that... May I see that newspaper? Certainly. Here. Lucy's fallen asleep. Come, we'll sit over here. Jack, did you read the story? Oh, yes. Read it, John. This morning, Whitby police discovered another dead woman. Another dead woman. This is the second one. Read on. Another dead woman on East Cliff. East Cliff? Why, that's where Lucy was. Exactly. Read on, John. Um, no identification. Presumed to be... Go down to where it says, cause of death. Here it is. Cause of death. The victim's throat. Go on, John. Yes, go on, John. The victim's throat had been torn from year to year, and the body completely drained of blood. Oh. Wolves. Dogs. Not wolves. Dogs. I know, I know. But when we were out there, it certainly sounded like wolves. They could have attacked that woman, and they could The have... article says that there was no blood anywhere on the ground. Did you read that? No blood in the body, but no blood anywhere else. Dogs or wolves or whatever. There have been pools, gouts of blood. Mm, true enough. And that's why Bertie and her friends blame it on the Ripper. They think he's some kind of ghost who can be in both places at once. London and Whitby, stealing blood. This does sound something like the murders in London. Could be someone imitating the London murders, perhaps draining the blood with, with the transfusion kit. Why? I don't know. But enough of this. Just blind superstition and nothing to do with us. We'll simply have to be more careful until the authorities sort it all out. Care for some wine? John? Mina? Yes, thank you, Jack. Please. I'll get it. Well, in any case, we'd best keep a close watch over Lucy, eh? The night on that cliff, I could have sworn I saw some- <coughs> Mina! What is it? A huge bat beating its wings against the window pane! A bat? Red eyes! Well, it's gone now. Must have come over from Carfax. Good evening. I am Dracula. I pray you will forgive this intrusion, but no one answered my knock, and your outer door was open. That's odd, I shall have to... It is closed now, and locked. I'm sorry, you... you startled us. Yes. Dr. Seward, we have been neighbors for some time. I regret that I have not made a, a formal visit until now. I have been busy putting my own house in order. Count, I... I am pleased to see you again, Mr. Harker, but not surprised. During your stay in Transylvania, you spoke of your friendship with Dr. Seward. I... I did? A pity you left so suddenly. I had such plans for you. Please, Count, allow me to welcome you to... If you do not mind, Doctor, I will not accept your extended hand. I dislike being touched. It is a peculiarity of my culture. Well, I didn't... I didn't mean to offend. No, no, I'm sure that you did not. Ah, you are Mina. 
Forgive me. I'm too familiar. No. Not at all. Your husband spoke of you often and showed me your picture. And so, you see, I feel that I know you intimately. You are very lovely. I hope that we may know each other better. Thank you. Yes. And this is my fiancé, Lucy Westenra. Ah, yes. You have been ill. You are feeling better now. Better now. Yes. Thank you. Your pain will end very soon now. You're satisfied of Carfax then, Count? Very much. It reminds me of my homeland, and I find it admirable for my purposes. Here, have a glass of wine of us. I do not drink wine. <laughs> ah! Please, please, forgive me. It was most clumsy of me. I have caused you to spill your wine. It's... it's nothing. I... I am comforted, then, that the wine holds no significance. My behavior is inexcusable. I should not have seized the wrist. It startled me, that's all. I, uh... I, too, was startled. At the sight of your wrist and the blood. Oh, yes. An, an accident earlier this evening. You must be careful, Dr. Seward, how you spill your blood. It is more dangerous than you know. Please forgive me. Of course. The vessel? I have a dozen more just like it. I can provide a much stronger vessel for your wine. That won't be necessary. It's... Ah, listen to them. The children of the night. What music they make. Music? The music of the hunt. Listen, listen. In my country, we have a long tradition of battle and conquest. There is death and violence in our blood, and we dance to the songs of our brother, the wolf. What a marvelous heritage you have, Count. The history, their traditions, the superstitions. You must be... Superstitions. Yes. The trinkets and incantations of thin-blooded peasants. That is why I've come here, to be a part of this rich-blooded England. In my own country, I was master. I will be master again! Now, I must go. The night is young, and I have much work to do. Count, oh, I must speak with you regarding... Soon. For now, my new home has many wounds, and I must make certain preparations. But we will all sup together at Carfax one evening. Soon. Oh. Must you go? He'll be back, Lucy. Won't you, Count? Before you know it. And now, good night. I'll show you to... Please, please, do not trouble yourself. I know the way. I bid you all a peaceful night's rest. The allure of the foreign prince. But his hands, so cold. Yes, it is a bit chilly out. Well, it's late. Lucy? Lucy? Oh, sorry. Dreaming, I guess. What were you saying? I was saying that it's late. Shall we retire to our rooms? Good idea. There are much better places for dreaming. Oh, John, really? <laughs> Later that night, Nina Harford lay in bed, unable to sleep, staring into the blackness above. And then she heard it. A voice, or only the wind. Lighting a candle, Nina slipped from her bed out of her room and down the hall, following the mysterious sound. 
There was a chill in the hallway and a strong draft that quickly extinguished the flame of Nina's candle. Rounding the corner, she was surprised to find the door to Lucy's room standing open. She entered. Lucy stood at the window, the curtains dancing violently to the wild rhythm of the wind. Lucy? Lucy! John! Jack! Help me! What is it? What? Mina! John! I can't close the window! She's still asleep. Sleepwalking again? The bed. Get her to the bed. Lucy. Lucy? Let her sleep, Jack, please. Yes, of course. You're right. I... Begging your pardon, sir? Oh. <laughs> no harm meant, Mrs. I heard your voices in here, and... Can well... this wait, Williams? Well, sir. No, sir. Let's step out into the hole, then. Excuse me, John, Mina. Of course. Now, what is it, Williams? It's Renfield, sir. You remember he caught a sparrow? Well, I ain't seen nothing like it. By midnight, he got five more of the little bull eaters into his cell. I hardly think. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. He, he caught him too easy, like they'd been sent to him. He tied him to his bedpost with little bits of twine and set to feeding him on spiders. They come back later, and the sparrows was gone. All of them. He turned them loose. No, sir. He ate them. Raw. Feathers and all. What? Ah. <sighs> Makes my skin crawl. Keeping rather late hours, aren't you, Doctor? Renfield. Look out now. <laughs> he thinks I would hurt you. Fancy me hurting you, <clears throat> fool. You've had a change of heart, then. Oh, uh, your wrist. Yes, an, an accident. I, I wasn't myself. Oh, yeah? Well, who was you then? Who was I? Who was I? Who was I? I was and am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Jack, we wondered if... Oh. Jack, what's... Ah, good evening. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Renfield. And you are... Nina. Mina Harker, this is my husband, Jonathan. Perhaps I'd better close the door. Thank you, John. The doctor and I have been discussing theology. I was just... You were just leaving, Williams? Yes, sir. Right, sir. Come along now. Well, I'd best be going. Delighted to have met you both. Mm, yes, thank you. You as well. We'll speak again, Doctor. Come along, Williams. Yes, sir. I mean, air now. Slow down. I'm the one with the keys. Is it always this exciting here, Jack? I'm sorry, John, Mina. I... Why don't you both go back to bed? I'll stay with Lucy. Mina, I can't ask you to... You didn't ask me. Besides, I couldn't possibly sleep now. Please, Jack. Very well. I, Van Helsing, should be here shortly after sunrise. I, I hope that he can help her. I, well, thank you, Mina. Good night. Good night, John. Good night, Jack. Come into Lucy's room with me, John. I'll stay with you. I can... Nonsense. You've been ill and need your sleep. So where will you? I'll sit here. It's a nice, comfortable chair, and I can use the lamp to read by. Well... I'll be fine. There's wine on the sideboard. Would you pour me a glass, please? Certainly. John, I didn't want to say anything in front of Jack, but when I first entered Lucy's room, there was... There was something in the window. I, I only saw him for a moment, but... That bad again? You'll laugh at me, but 
I swear that standing outside the window was Count Dracula. Mia, we're on an upper floor on a cliff looking out over the harbor. It's not very likely that you... No, 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 of course not. I know. It couldn't have been. You go on to bed, John. I'll sit here and read. Your wine glass. Thank you. Oops! <sighs> Sorry. Caught it. Oh, I spilled some wine. Only a bit. No harm done. Wouldn't want another wine glass broken, eh? Well, good night, Mina. See you in the morning. In an hour or two. Good night, John. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to take a short intermission. In a few minutes, we will return to the FLHS's production of Dracula. And we're out. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, one. And now we return to Dracula. You're a master now. I shall do whatsoever you command. I shall follow you wheresoever you go. And you shall be hated by all for my name's sake. Brother will deliver brother to me, the father his child, and children will rise against parents and put them to death. The blood is the life. I come not to bring peace, but to spill blood. The blood is the life. Believe in me, and you shall never truly die, for you shall possess the secret of eternal life. Life! Life! The blood is the life! That's the situation, Professor. Her room is upstairs, here. Good. I'm going to see her at once. Do you think you might provide a diagnosis? Yes. I'm afraid that I might. I beg your pardon. Which room is it? Here. Lucy? Lucy, are you up? Hello? Lucy? Mina? Try the knob. Lucy? Mina? Hmm? Oh. John, I've, I've had such a strange dream. Oh, who's that man? Professor Van Helsing. He's just arrived this morning. How is she, Professor? She's bad, I'm afraid. How bad? Very bad. She's so, so pale. I don't understand. Just yesterday, she... Look here, on her throat. What do you see? Uh, a wound. Some sort of bite? Yes. Not fresh, but freshly opened. Oh, uh, she stirs. Jack? I'm here, darling. I'm here. Jack, I... Professor, uh, we must do something. She's gotten so much worse. Overnight, she... Jack, come. Jack, into my arms. Come. Come and kiss me. No, stay back. Not for your living soul. You're... You are... Van Helsing? I am. Please. Well, I can't. I must tell you. I know, my child. I know. What was I? How could I? It is a powerful seduction, little one. You will know absolution. Van Helsing, what in the world are you talking about? 
We are wasting time. We must. Please, please guard him and give me peace. I swear it, my child. Oh, Jack, if only we... <laughs> it is over. What? Jack, she, she's dead. No! Oh. Their certificate listed blood disease as the cause of Lucy's death. It was at least a part of the truth. The rest would not be easily told, nor easily believed. A week passed and I realized I could keep the secret no longer. Professor, you've been gone all day. Yes, I had investigations to make before the sunset. We were afraid you'd miss dinner. How was Jack? Better this evening. Good. Now, friend John, all must follow in order. Tell me of this Count Dracula. Not much to tell. A nobleman, centric, wealthy. That you already know, of, of course. The rest, he's... Yes, you have repressed some trauma. Amnesia. Friend John, we must know what occurred during your stay in Transylvania. Uh, would you submit to an experiment? Experiment? We must have the knowledge that is locked away somewhere deep in your memory, and we may bring it out with hypnosis. Hypnosis? Do you mean we could- oh! Mina! Behind the curtain! Renfield! Good evening. You know me? Do I know you? Ah, wait, wait. You are Van Helsing, are you not? I am. Oh, this is indeed an honor. Of course I've read your books, all of them! They're quoting you now in the Whitechapel business, aren't they? I've done some reading in the vein myself. I employ a nom de plume. Of course, that pays tribute to our host, Dr. Seward. Here's a passage I'm proud of. You will soon hear from me in my funny little games. Out of context, of course. Well, no matter, I've always wanted to ask you if... Of course, there's no time for that later, eh? For now, I have come to pay my respects to Dr. Seward upon the death of his betrothed. How did you know about Lucy's death? And Dr. Seward's plan to marry. I am but mad north, northwest. What a man is so loved as our host, everything regarding him is of interest in our little community. Rumors fly, as do visitors. Professor. Hold a moment, friend John. There is more here than meets the eye. Actually, the rumors do not fly so much as stay in the rooms. The rumors that rumors do not fly. The rumors remain ruminating in rooms, spreading rumors of flies. Ha! And as for the death of uh, Lucy, was it? As for the death of Lucy. Renfield. Dr. Seward. I knew you would come. We're playing at horoscopes. You are a Capricorn, are you not? Doctor, I can't find them any- There you are! I know you. Oh, you do, huh? Yes. Excellent. Well, you are a fishmonger. No such thing. Then I would you were so an honest a man. What's he babbling about? Honest? Aye, sir. To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of 10,000. Take Renfield back to his room and see that he doesn't leave again. I got his door double locked. I don't know how he keeps getting out, sir. A fallen angel rolls away the stone. <laughs> there you have it, then. My mistake. I never thought of angels. Come along now. I'll get you something to eat. I'm not hungry. Well, that's a surprise. Probably been emptying the mouse traps again. Ignore that reference, Mrs. Harker. It relates to my past. I'm done with all of that now. On the contrary, Williams tells me that you've begun again, Renfield, collecting flies and spiders. What do you expect from a person like that? Working class? The man might easily misinterpret any small gesture. Do you see, Mrs. Harker, what I must put up with from the help? It all stems from a simple misunderstanding. I once fancied that, by consuming a multitude of living things, one might indefinitely prolong life, relying, of course, upon the scriptural phrase, where the blood is the life. Deuteronomy 12, 23. Well, yes, yes, quite right. The passage is most instructive in its entirety, only to be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life, and thou mayest eat not eat the life with the flesh. But what about the souls of your victims? Renfield. Uh, I don't want any souls. Thousands of them, all around you. Flies and spiders and birds. You have taken their lives. No! You must feed their souls. Take your hand from your ears and listen to me, Renfield. Flies, Hedda, I don't want flies or spiders. What's the use of them? There isn't enough of them to eat or- Or drink? 
The blood is the life. 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 Deuteronomy 8, 23. Only be sure that you do not drink the blood. The blood is the life. And you shall not drink. The blood is the life. To hell with you and your souls. I don't want any souls. I won't take them. I want only the blood. I want life. Keep your souls. I hope you're able to keep your own soul, Renfield. Another Bible verse. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what is past. Avoid what is to come. I do repent, but heaven hath pleased it so. To punish me with this and this with me, that I must be the scourge and minister. Please, take me away from here. Dismiss me. Turn me out. Free me. Or if not, take me to another asylum on the other side of running water. On the other side of... Anywhere. Anywhere but here. Please, I must leave quickly. And so must you. All of you, run. Release the others. Now, tonight, burn this place to the ground and see prayers over it. Bury the ashes. Turn your backs on it. Walk away. Run. Run away. Don't look back. Run. 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 Run as you've never run before. Before. Before it's too late. Oh, don't you see? Don't you see? It's him. It's... Ah! Look at the window of that. No. No, I won't tell. I wasn't going to betray you. Van Helsing. Did the bat frighten you, Renfield? He'll kill me. He doesn't need me anymore. If, if you can't save my soul, save your own. You mustn't believe me. You must trust me. Oh, God. Help me. Why should you? Why should you? It's insane. It's just insane. Why should you? Take Renfield back to his room. Yes, sir, but I ain't fool enough to promise he'll stay there. Please, Mr. Renfield, Dr. Seward will see that no harm comes to you. We want to help you, really we do. If you'll let us... The harm has already been done, dear lady. My personal loss is the least of it. Let's get along with it now. I can hardly blame you for doubting the word of a lunatic. However, please do me the justice of bearing in mind that I tried to convince you tonight. Mrs. Harker, you have been very kind to me. My prayers will be with you. And mine with you, Redfield. Come on now. <sighs> the poor man. It is important that he be heavily guarded. Professor, I don't believe he'd harm us. I have not suggested that he would. Friend John, are you ready to proceed with our experiment? You mean the hypnosis? Now? Yes, just after dinner. We have even less time than I thought, but for now... We eat hearty, yeah? We have much head of us, and it would be best on a full stomach. An excellent meal, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Would anyone care for wine? Perhaps later. There is work to do in little time. Very well. Thank you, Bertie. You may go. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. John, you remain seated. Friend Jack, please bring me the candle from the bookshelf. John, what hypnosis, Mina? Van Helsing's going to hypnotize me. Van Helsing wants to see if John can remember his time in Transylvania. Is it dangerous? No, no, no. Perfectly safe. It is a tool of science and medicine. We may accomplish what appear to be miracles, even cure disease. Where do you want this candle? Here, on the table in front of Jean. Light it, please. There. Madame Mina, turn down the gas, please. We must have darkness to facilitate the trance. Ah, yes. Good. We begin. John? You will look into the flame of the candle. Now, Jonathan, stare deeply into the candle. Deeply. Concentrate on the light. Only the light. Nowhere but the light. Deeply. Deeply. Relax. Relax. Feel a wave of sleep come over your body. It begins in your feet 
relax. It washes slowly, slowly over your body. It washes in like the tide and you feel it moving upward, creating with you, embracing you. Let your body relax, relax, relax. Stare deeply into the light, deeper, deeper, deeper into the light, deeper. Your eyes burn with the light, but you cannot look away. Your eyelids grow heavy. They are closing, closing. They are closed, but you still see the light and you still hear my voice. I will count backward from five and with each number, you will drift deeper and deeper to sleep. Five, four, deep, Three, two, deep, one. You are in the deep sleep, deeply sleep. And now we will go back, back into your time in Transylvania. Back, back, back. Remember, remember, remember. Wolves guard the gate. His room is locked. I see him only in the evening. Then one night, I can't sleep. I see him through my window. He's climbing down the stone wall of the castle, slowly, like a lizard. Look, down there in the courtyard, a woman, she screams. Monster! Monster! Give me give back, me back my, my child! child. Monster. Monster! Suddenly, the courtyard is filled with wolves. There must be, there must be hundreds of them. Oh God, it's horrible. She screams, she screams, and then they're gone. It's so still. Mama, mama, mama. And then I hear the child in the castle in his room crying, crying. Mama, 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 mama. 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 What time is it? Have I slept? The moonlight streaming through my window. Three young women approach me. How did they get into my room? The door was locked. How did they? Their gowns blow in the night wind. The pale yellow moonlight passes through the fabric. I can see their bodies beneath them. And the moonlight passes through their bodies. No shadows. They have no shadows. They laugh and laugh. It's over musical laughter. They come to my bed. I feel their lips in my throat. Can't move. Feel their teeth so sharp. He busts into my room. He comes for me. Red eyes. Red eyes. I awaken. Have I slept? The sun has risen. I run to his room and force the door open. The room is bare. A coffin, the only furniture. I lift the lid and within. Dracula. Gouts of blood trickle from the corners of his mouth, over his chin and neck, the whole awful creature swollen, engorged, bursting and bloating with blood. Suddenly his eyes are open. Red eyes, red eyes, he sees me, I'm sure of it. What is there? Dead, 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 not dead, dead, not dead. Red eyes, he must escape out the window. They follow those eyes, red eyes, they follow. Down the stone wall, red eyes. Red eyes, he's coming for me, he's coming for me. He's coming for all of us. He's coming. Oh God, oh God, oh God, monster, monster, monster. Under hypnosis, Jonathan Harker had remembered his stay in Transylvania. And now we know Count Dracula was a vampire. This is the most ridiculous, a vampire? Why not a pixie or a leprechaun? Van Helsing, you surely cannot believe. You believe? Do you not, friend John? How could I not? I remember it. All of it, my lord. Oh, John. It's clear to me now. He rests here at Carfax and does the bulk of his evil in London. Very clever. 
In this way, he attracts little attention near the place where he sleeps. Van Helsing, surely you can't expect us to. Excuse me, Dr. Seward, sir, your newspaper. Thank you, Bertie, I'll take it. Yes, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Friend Jack, you were saying? I was saying that you can't expect us to be... The Lady in White! What? Here, in the newspaper. The Lady in White. Quickly, I must see. What is it, Professor? Missing children here on Hampstead Heath. Ah, so soon. Here, John, read, read. Officials report children missing at night. Found the following morning with small puncture wounds on their throats. Lucy had marks on her throat. Yes. Yes, she did. Such as might be made by an animal. Blind. Always we are so blind. And the police of the division have been instructed to keep a sharp eye out for stray animals that might. Enough. Thank you, friend John. Now, make note. Wounds on the throat of the children, a wound on the throat of Miss Lucy. She'd been ill for months. Those marks were fresh. No, freshly opened. <sighs> the marks on the throat of the children... Could have been made by... Were made by Miss Lucy. Lucy is dead. Professor. You mean, like those women in Transylvania? Lucy, she... Is dead. Lucy is... Dead? No, my son. But we may have hope. Destroy Count Dracula, and the dear Miss Lucy will be freed from his curse. Then she will truly be dead. If not, she will walk with him for centuries, undead among the living. Lucy is dead. Or, if we may find the vampire's coffin, he will have no refuge with the coming of dawn, and will die in the rays of the morning sun. But it will be very difficult to find his coffin, for it will be very well hidden. You're saying we must go to Carfax? Yes. We might never find his coffin, Professor. Is there no other way to give Liz Lucy peace? There is. How, Professor? Lucy is. By going into her crypt and driving a wooden stake through her heart. Dear God. Jack. Get out. Please, this is difficult for me. Because you're my friend, and I, I care about you. Then I shall make it easier. We are friends no longer. You have ten minutes, Van Helsing, to leave my home. My poor Jack. Could he be mistaken, Professor? Perhaps, perhaps she... There is no mistake. I need your help, both of you. Oh, Professor, I don't know. If we were if we were to give peace to the dear Miss Lucy, we must go to her crypt. I would have both of you by my side so that you may see her as she returns just before the dawn. Then I believe I may do my work with your blessing. Please come with me. Nina. Oh, John, it seems so horrible, but I trust the professor. Lucy was my friend. I can't bear to think of her like, like that. We'll be ready in 10 minutes, Professor. 10 minutes. Good, for that is all the time I have been given. Saddened by the hurt I caused my dear friend Jack Seward, I moved down the hall to my friend and began to pack my belongings. Suddenly, I became aware of the chill of the room. I turned to see a strange green vapor seeping in through the crack between the window and the casement. As I watched, the mist took form. I have come for you, Van Helsing. You cannot be allowed to live. Come not one step closer, monster. With the protection of this crucifix, I will live at least through this meeting. Idolator! You merely prolong the agony. Look! Look into my eyes. Look and see the face of death. No, no, I, I cannot. I... Professor? We heard... Dracula! John, there on the floor, my crucifix, hold it high, where he can see. Yes. Superstitious fools, do you truly think to defeat me? <laughs> my revenge has just begun. 
I spread it over centuries and time is on my side. I have your precious Miss Lucy. You held her in the sunlight and I took her in the darkness. She is mine. And soon I shall have you all. <laughs> John, in that drawer, my gun, throw it to me. Do you truly think to stop me with bullets? I cannot be stopped. She who would have been your mortal bride has instead become the bride of Dracula through eternity. <laughs> a bat! He's turned into a bat! Look out. The window. Where is he? There, up there. You waste your bullets, my friend. He's gone. I hit him. I know. I hit him. Now do you believe me, my son? Van Helsing, he... he... He turned... He turned to a bat. Uh, a, a bat. I saw him. He assumes many forms. He killed Lucy. Night after night, while we slept, he was... Yes, yes I am so sorry. You knew? I feared. I recognize the symptoms of Miss Lucy from your letter. I hoped to protect her before she could become as she, he is. I was too late. His victims come back? Yes. Then Lucy, she is... The Lady in White. Professor, the door! Someone's trying to... <gasps> Renfield. Look at his face. He's been beaten horribly. Is he... He lives yet. Though it's a miracle that he does. Mina, my medical bag. Over there in the desk. Fractured skull. Internal bleeding, I think. Ugh, see here. Rib cage is crushed. <sighs> Your bag, Jack. Not much I can do here. An injection. Stop some of the pain. Ben... Helsing? Shh, 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 don't talk. He must talk. Uh, I'm... I'm so... so thirsty. I, I... John, wine? Blood on my hands. Look, so much... so much blood. The, the blood is the life. The blood have I... Have I lost my blood? Here it is. Thank you, John. Here, Renfield. W what is it? <laughs> what? Wine. All my... All my blood, all my... Quickly. Quickly, before I die, I must... It was... It, it was weeks ago, he was... At my window, a, a pillar of fire, a, a churning cloud, laughing in the moonlight, sh sharp white teeth, r red eyes. He, he promised me things if I would let him in. He, he promised to make me immortal. He, he promised me, promised me lives, and he, he called to them, ca called to them. And they came, lies glistening with steel and sapphire, and moths in the night with with skulls and crossbones the deaths had moth then he whispered rats i will give you rats and everyone a life with a wave of his hand the rats came tumbling rats as far as the eye could see rats great rats small rats lean rats and you let him in brownie rats brown rats black rats renfield gray rats tawny rats did you invite him in Mr. Renfield. Yes. Yes, I let him in. God help me, I let him in. A vampire may not enter a house unless invited from within. He, he came through the barred window. I, I thought it was a splendid trick, a splendid. <coughs> he would require Renfield's help in traveling to London. He, he took me with him. Over the rooftops, I saw it all. I was that certain scribe, and I promised to follow. A vampire cannot cross running water, you see. 
he would need a mortal agent to transport him over rivers and streams. In this way, the vampire of Carfax is the Ripper of Whitechapel. I saw it, wrote it down, wrote it down, boasted as if the deeds were mine. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? Oh, but I didn't think of souls. I shall have to answer for souls now, shan't I, doctor? They're all around me now, all around me now. No, no, they're gone, Renfield. They're all gone. Gone to heaven? Yes, Renfield, gone to heaven. Gone to heaven. Gone to heaven, gone to Van Helsing, Van Helsing. I'm here. He's taking her life, Van Helsing, taking her life. I've smelled him on her, the mingling of blood. Lucy, he means Lucy. No, 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 you, you don't. I, I tried to stop him tonight. Madman, you know, possesses a natural strength. I am him mad, you see, Jacob held an angel, surely. I can hold a devil. I, I couldn't let him have her. No more, no more. I would stop him. I would take his life, his blood. <sighs> Red eyes, they burn. They burn through me. He beat me and beat me and beat me and beat me. And Mrs. Harker. I'm here, Renfield. Oh, my dear. Take care. Please, please take care. Ben Helsing, it is she. He has Mrs. Harker. What? What is he talking about? What is he talking about? What are you, you saying? Save her. Find him. Lie. Find You're him. You're lying. She was. Ben Helsing, he's lying to you. He's Find mad. him. Destroy him. We all know he's ben mad. Ben Helsing, destroy him before he destroys her. Ben Helsing, promise me. I so promise, Renfield. I would join you, but just now I set my birds free. My little... My poor, poor little birds. He is dead. Yeah, Helsing. What he said about Mina. He's Madam, Madam Mina, the scarf around your neck. Remove it, please. My scarf? Please. I can't. Allow me. No, I... Hang marks. Mina, no. I... I felt compelled to cover them. Oh, John. Under his spell. Professor, save her, please. Now there is no choice. We must find the vampire's coffin. If we destroy it, he will have no sanctuary from the sunlight, and he will die. And Mina? Madam Mina will be free of the vampire's curse, as will the dear Miss Lucy who would then rest in peace. I'm like him now, a devil like him. Not so. We can stop him before the evil is complete. It's not too late? It is not too late. And if I die now, before he is destroyed? Then you become as he has become. And if that happens, you must promise me that you will- Yes, I promise. Friend John, my bag. Here it is, Professor. Here, take these. Sharpen stakes. And hammers. Sledges. Short-handled sledges. And these. Crucifixes. Take them. John. Jack. And Amina. Ah! Dear God. Mina. The crucifix. It's, it's burned into her flesh, like a brand. Ugh, he's in her blood. Unclean, unclean. I should have thought, the mark of the beast. You see, even God rejects me. Not so, he provides a warning and a symbol of our quest. We'll dress a burn, I'll get my- It won't heal, it will never heal. Madam Mina, there will be many years ahead for you and friend John, many years. This, I promise. Come, light your lamps. We must, we have much work ahead. Be swift, for this night is different from all other nights. This night, we destroy the vampire. Quickly, to Carfax. Van Helsing, look at this place. Cobwebs, dust, 
How could anyone possibly live here? The vampire does not live, my son. Not as we know it, and he cares not for elaborate surroundings. We begin our search. We might go more quickly if we were to split up. Yes, but keep your protections ready. We will meet back here in a quarter hour. If nothing has been found, then we search the grounds and outbuildings. Friend John, Madame Mina, take the top floor up those stairs. Very well, Professor. Come, Mina. Be careful, Professor. Jack. I'll meet you in back here in 15 minutes. Jack, you go that way. I will search the catacombs below. Be watchful, Jack, for it is night and the vampire walks. Take care, Van Helsing. Jack. Who is that? Mina, is that you? Hmm. Must be imagining things. Jack. Who is Jack. it? Who is it? Who's calling me? Show yourself. Jack. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Are you surprised to see me? You're dead. No. We buried you. You're dead. You're frightening me, Jack. Oh, Lucy, I. I want so badly to, to believe. No, I, no, no, you're dead. You're dead, you're dead, you're- Jack, I've traveled a long way to find you. A long and difficult way. Don't turn away. Look at me, Jack. You see me? I'm here. Don't you love me, Jack? Don't you love me, Jack? Forever. Then come with me forever. Come. And we can rest together. We would have been together in life. Let us now be together in death. Yes, together for always. Together, together, together. Jack! Ah! Oh, my Lord, it's Lucy. Wh what? What? I owe. Oh. Oh, oh no, oh no. Use your crucifixes. Drive her back into the corner. Look out. Be careful. Back, drive her back. Now hold her back, both of you. <coughs> the stake must pierce the heart in the first blow. Answer me now, friend Jack. Am I to proceed? Yes, please, for the love of God, Professor, do it now. <coughs> Jack, oh Jack, my, my love, Jack. It is over, finally, she is at peace. Mina knew, somehow Mina knew. She told me Jack was in trouble. She knew about Lucy. It is the power of the vampire that taints her blood, causing her to. Where is Madame Mina? Upstairs, she's safe. She has the crucifix then. No, you should never have left her. Come, quickly. Mom, is that you? Professor? Jack? to your husband, who will be forced to join the others in destroying one they love. Can you not imagine how it will feel as the oaken stake seeks your heart? Please, please. Do not plead with me. I must survive. Do you curse the hawk when he kills the dove? It is his nature. 
You murdered Lucy. I gave her eternal life. They took that life. You sent them to do it. Lucy died. You created an obscene thing in her image. Who are you to judge the quality of life? She would have spent an eternity at my side. She would have seen empires rise and fall, remain young and beautiful long after you and your kind turned to dust. She would have been a welcome companion through the centuries, but now she is gone, and your fate will be my revenge. No. Come to me, Mina. No, no. I died, and I behold, I live eternally, and I hold the keys of death and the keys of hell. Mina, come to me. No, 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 no. Oh, oh God. Oh, no, no, no. Help, someone help. Please help, stop. Mina. Oh, no, no, no. Do not struggle, accept. Oh, no, I won't. Mina, open the door, let us in. Let Mina. us in. Come to me. Break down the door. Come, Mina. Oh, no. Monster. There's no escape, Count. Your honor of judgment has come. You are wrong, Van Helsing. Behold. <laughs> Rats, they're coming out of the walls. The floor. There John, must be hundreds of them. John, quickly throw your lamp into his coffin. No! You have no refuge, Count. The coffin is on fire. Jack, that window, cake with dust. It is morning, the sun rises. Throw that chair through the glass. This is for Lucy. Die, monster, die. The sun! The rats, they've gone. And Dracula, nothing left of him but dust. Yes, now even he has peace. And John, the marks of the beast. Behold. They're gone. Mina, the fame marks. The bird, gone. Our work here is done. Quickly now, we must leave before the building comes down around us. At last, Dracula is truly dead. And Madame Mina is purified. So, there's her story. As we watched our past fall into the flames, we realized that none would believe, even now you don't believe. Shut your eyes, your still lies mind, to these testimonies. Do you still not avoid the breaking mirrors? Do you still not sit there back in the darkness, away from the windows, your chair pushed to the wall, listening to things in the night? Did you spend the night alone in the graveyard? I did not. What frightens you most? Being alone in the darkness? Or fearing that you are not alone? Beware tonight, my friend. For it is dark without, and the shadows hide many things. Lock all your doors. Keep your eyes fixed over your shoulder. Be careful, even as you lie in the darkness of your bed tonight. And listen. Listen. Shh. Listen. In the shadows, just beyond possibility. Hide. Watch. Wait. Works. The vampire. <laughs> You have been listening to the ATA and International Thespian Society Troop 3103 radio dramatization of Dracula. A radio play written by Philip Cretion, based on his own stage play and on the novel by Bram Stoker. And now, FLHS is signing off for the broadcast day. Good night and pleasant dreams.